For millions of people, Netflix is the go-to place for movie and TV streaming. This was a company that started by posting DVDs by snail mail. Now, its services alone constitute about 15% of all the world's internet bandwidth. This Netflix company story will explore the origins of the company and track some of the important historical moments. Before we continue, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting the subscribe button below to get a notification on our next video. Netflix was founded in August of 1997 by two serial entrepreneurs, Mark Randolph and Reed Hastings. The company began out in Scotts Valley, California, and has grown to become one of the world's leading entertainment platforms on the internet. It has more than 151 million paid subscribers in over 190 countries around the world and offers a wide range of TV series, documentaries, and feature films across a varied range of genres and languages, including original productions. Reed Hastings co-founded Netflix in 1997. He received a Bachelor of Arts degree from Bowdoin College in 1983 and later, a Master's in Artificial Intelligence from Stanford University in 1988. He had founded Pure Software which made tools for software developers since 1991. After a 1995 IPO and several acquisitions, Pure was acquired by Rational Software in 1997 for $700 million. The other co-founder, Mark Randolph, is an expert Silicon Valley entrepreneur, advisor, and investor. As co-founder and founding CEO of Netflix, he also served on the Netflix Board of Directors until his retirement in 2003. Randolph graduated from the university with a degree in geology. He founded no fewer than six successful startups, including the magazine Macworld. He has mentored hundreds of early-stage entrepreneurs. Netflix was originally a rent-by-mail DVD service that used a paper rental model. Hastings, who supplied the firm's startup cash of $2.5 million, had stumbled upon the idea for rental by mail when he was forced to pay $40 in fines after returning an overdue videotape of the film Apollo 13. At the time, few video stores carried DVDs, and renting them had to be done in person. So, the company was also able to take advantage of the small size and lightweight of the discs, which wouldn't cost much to be shipped to users. They discovered a mailing package that could safely ship a disc for the cost of a first-class stamp. The company officially opened for business on April 14, 1998, with 30 employees and 925 titles for rent, and they comprised nearly the entire catalog of DVDs in print. Netflix initially offered a 7-day DVD rental for $4, including a $2 shipping fee, with a cost reduction when several discs were rented. Users would browse and order the films they wanted on their website, put in an order, and Netflix would post them to your door. After renters had finished with the DVDs, they would post them back. The discs could be kept longer, though it was for an additional fee. New DVDs were also offered for sale at a discount of up to 30%. Consumers could purchase a rented disc by having the balance of the retail price charged to their credit card. Their website offered some features to educate people like movie reviews, and when a customer had rented several titles, a profile would be made that automatically suggested similar movies. Netflix's mail-order rental model was in direct competition with rental giants like Blockbuster. They had the opportunity to partner with Netflix, or even buy the company out for $50 million. Eventually, Blockbuster could not compete with the move to online streaming and rentals, and filed for bankruptcy in 2010. In late September of 1999, Netflix introduced a new service, the Marquee Program. This allowed members who paid $15.95 per month to pre-select four DVDs, with no due dates or late fees. Despite its growing popularity, for fiscal 1999, the company reported losses of $29.8 million on revenues of only $5 million. Just like many internet startups, Netflix was still spending heavily to entice customers to its website, trusting that it would become profitable when the brand became better established. In February 2000, Netflix introduced a new service, CineMatch. It compared rental patterns among its customers and looked for similarities in preference, using this information to recommend titles to people whose profiles were similar. 
Early the next year, the company changed the marquee program to offer unlimited rentals for $19.95 a month, with a maximum of four titles out at a given time, though this was later reduced to three. Amazingly, shipping and handling were included in the price. The company was currently distributing more than 100,000 DVDs per week. In the winter of 2001, Netflix secured additional venture capital funds. During the spring, the company began offering a free six-week trial membership via the popular movie information website. In September, Netflix partnered with electronics and DVD retailer, Best Buy, to create a co-branded DVD rental service in the company's 1,800 stores and on its websites. Despite its rapidly growing customer base, the company lost $21.1 million for the year on revenues of $74.3 million. In February 2002, Netflix announced it had gotten the subscription figure of 500,000. This included some who chose the recently added Netflix Lite, which cost $13.95 a month, and it limited users to two rentals at a time. In March, the company restored its plans for an initial public offering (IPO), and when it sold 5.5 million shares in late May, it raised $82.5 million. In addition to the IPO, the firm also quietly amended its name to Netflix Incorporated, making the F lower case. With a membership count of 600,000 in the US, Netflix went public. Its stock was offered for $15 a share, with an initial offering of 5,500,000 shares. The company ended the year with around 857,000 registered Netflix accounts. And, annual figures for 2002 showed double the previous year's revenues, $152.8 million, and losses of just $1.56 million, an impressive improvement over 2001. Netflix hit the 1 million subscriber mark in February of 2003. And in June, Netflix was awarded US patents for its software systems that tracked DVD rentals and compiled customer requests. By midsummer, the company had more than 1.1 million subscribers and a library of 15,000 titles to browse. Co-founder Mark Randolph stepped down as a member of the board and left Netflix in 2003. In 2004, there was a doubling in the number of Netflix accounts. Netflix's member base surpassed 2 million. They also had one of the first encounters with the legal system when they were sued for false advertising concerning claims of unlimited rentals with one-day delivery. Netflix denied any misconduct, and both parties eventually settled. By 2005, Netflix had its Netflix members rise to 4.2 million, and was shipping 1 million DVDs by mail per day with over 35,000 titles to choose from. Netflix introduced a streaming service, called Watch Now in 2007. It allowed members to immediately watch television shows and movies on their personal computers. This was a remarkable shift in the company's business model. The service launched with just 1,000 titles and only worked on PCs and Internet Explorer. It also offered a limit on the number of hours of free streaming, with a maximum of 18 free hours a month, based on the user's subscription plan. At this point, Netflix had noticed that streaming was the future of entertainment and took advantage of it. By the end of 2007, Netflix had 7.5 million registered subscribers, up almost 20% on the previous year. The company continued to grow exponentially until the end of 2010 where it ended with more than 20 million subscribers. This year also marked the point where the number of customers who were primarily streaming shows outpaced those who were renting. In 2011, Netflix decided to split its streaming and DVD rental service into two separate services. This meant that customers who wanted to use both services had to open a second account and make a payment for two different packages, starting at $7.99 each or $15.98 for the pair. This was against the former $1.10 a month for DVD rentals and unlimited on-demand streaming. Within a few months, Netflix had lost 600,000 subscribers in the US, and the company's stock had lost half its value. Hastings dropped plans for Quickster, the new DVD service, although the DVD and streaming plans would remain separate. 
However, by December 2011, the damage was done, and Netflix stock had dropped 75% from its peak. In 2012, Netflix became available in Europe, including the United Kingdom, Ireland, and in the Nordic countries. By year's end, the company had more than 40 million subscribers. By the end of 2015, Netflix was launched in Austria, Belgium, France, Germany, Luxembourg, Switzerland, Australia, New Zealand, and Japan, with continued expansion across Europe and Italy, Spain, and Portugal. At about that time, Amazon Transparent became the first show produced by Amazon Studios to win a major award. So, Netflix was no longer the only streaming game in town. In 2016, Netflix expands to another 130 countries around the world, bringing its reach to a total of 190 countries. It also offers programming in 21 languages. At the same time, subscriber numbers reach an astounding 100 million globally. 2018 also sees Netflix's acquisition of the book publisher Miller World, founded by the legendary comic book creator Mark Miller, to adapt company properties into films and TV shows. Netflix was also the most nominated service at the year's Primetime and Creative Arts Emmy Awards, receiving an amazing 112 nominations. The company ties with the veteran HBO for most wins, taking home 23 accolades for their series, including Glow, Godless, Queer Eye, and Seven Seconds. 2019 also saw the unveiling of Netflix's first international original films from the Middle East, Jin, and Thailand, The Stranded. This year, Netflix wins 27 Primetime and Creative Arts Emmy Awards for series including Black Mirror, Bandersnatch, Ozark, Queer Eye, and When They See Us. However, when other companies began to join or expand their streaming services, it meant more competition. Disney, AT&T, and Apple launched their Netflix alternatives in 2019. When Disney Plus made its debut the following year, it meant the end of Disney blockbusters, such as the Star Wars films, being available on other streaming services. To date, Netflix's subscriber base has grown to well over 203.66 million, about 74 million from the United States alone. Many experts believe that the future could be a little more challenging for Netflix. Mostly because of the vigor in other streaming services launched to compete with Netflix's seeming dominance. However, Netflix seems to be focused on building its content as it continues to provide satisfactory services. What do you think of the Netflix company story? Do you think there are things they could have done better? What's your opinion of the future for Netflix? Thanks for watching this video. Please share your opinions in the comments section below, and remember to click the subscribe button to be the first person to watch new videos on this channel.